you can either like me or dislike me and if you dislike me that's your problem, it's not mine. I kind of wish I handled the breakup differently. I felt like everything was being scrutinized and I was fiercely protective and loyal. I think people question the relationship and my motives anyway. There was never anyone in the media when I was growing up who would speak openly about like female pleasure and periods and stuff like that. So I'm so thankful that I've got that platform and it's kind of snowballed for me to be able to speak like that. Hi, I'm Megan Barton Hansen and I'm here with Cosmo playing Spill the Tea. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. I think the biggest misconception is that I'm like cold and I'm a man eater. Like how I come across on Love Island, I think there's a difference between knowing what you want as a woman and being assertive and being mean. And I'm not mean. I just get what I want a lot of the time. <laughs>I'm very honest, so I think that's been great. And I think it's helped so many people just be their authentic self because I've been unapologetically me, whether that's my sexuality, working in the sex industry, or just being a woman who openly says that she enjoys sex. So yeah, I think that's the best thing. But the worst thing, probably again my honesty because it has got me in trouble just because there is no filter. So yeah, sometimes I've done interviews and the headlines twisted and stuff like that, but I wouldn't change it. I think I enjoy both, like I love being in a relationship, I'm quite an affectionate person, I love like cuddles and I can be quite needy but at the same time I think as I get older I'm trying to teach myself that it's fine to go for meals on your, on your own and travel on your own and do all the things that you want to do in a relationship by yourself and I think that's so powerful as a woman to do that. So, you know, when you're like young and you're still at school and I told my mum I was at a friend's sleepover and she got me this brand new phone that I begged for for my birthday um, and she called it 20 times. I didn't answer. I wasn't where I said I was. So she found me and I was petrified. I was like, okay, mum, I'm here. And um, she come and pick me up and in front of my first ever boyfriend got the phone and chucked it in, you know, them big recycling bins. I was like, well, you obviously don't use it and dashed it in there. I was mortified, so embarrassed. <laughs> So my dream date, I think it's really cliche, but if I was having a laugh with someone, they made me laugh, they will be like authentically them. I could be in the dingiest bar and I wouldn't care, unless it was Post Malone, obviously. That would be the best date. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything about my life after Love Island. Like, I'm so grateful for the platform and being able to use my voice for things that there was never anyone in the media when I was growing up who would speak openly about like female pleasure and periods and stuff like that. So I'm so thankful that I've got that platform and it's kind of snowballed for me to be able to speak like that. But yeah, I kind of wish I handled the breakup differently. I felt like everything was being scrutinized and I was fiercely protective and loyal. I think people question the relationship and my motives anyway. So when it broke down, yeah, I could have handled that more level-headedly and more grown up, I think. No, I think some of the girls have, I can't remember exactly who, but I think because we've all been on that experience together and lived the same journey, it's like kind of like a sisterhood. And I'm proud of everyone and like what we're all achieving. So yeah, definitely like some of the girls and I think we're all working so hard and it's great to like show strong, strong, hardworking women. the Lord himself slid in and obviously as a true Kardashians fan I was absolutely ecstatic I was like oh my god I might feature on the next season but he slid in just to give me so much abuse about the way I treated Eyal so it was kind of shocking so I heard through the grapevine Eyal is dating Scott Disick's girlfriend's sister maybe just it come up in conversation why Eyal got voted off but I'm sorry Eyal I love him and he's a great guy but yeah we just wasn't compatible so sorry when I first come out of the villa I did respond to trolls just because I think I'm Jim Carrey and I think I'm hilarious so I kind of feel witty with it but then it just I don't know, it fuels it, I feel more. And I wasn't really getting anywhere. I was just fueling all of these trolls and giving them what they wanted. So 
As I've got older, I've tried to like simmer down and not rise to it. I think the most spontaneous thing was before Love Island, I was talking to a guy and he was good friends with Snoop Dogg and he actually got me a photo shoot in LA with Snoop Dogg which was so bizarre and then he flew me out to Cannes where Snoop was DJing so that was really spontaneous, I think the most spontaneous I've ever been. Now I overthink everything, I'm like what outfits am I going to wear, am I going to be papped? Don't have that freedom just to be wild. I think I'm so open just because I think it's harder to be someone that you're not and I'm not an actress and to me I think you can't do any wrong like if I'm authentically me you can either like me or dislike me and if you dislike me that's your problem it's not mine so I guess as you get older you just become a little bit more you know yourself and become a bit more selfish so yeah I try my best not to look back. I think it's such a waste of energy. You can't change the past. I think I was in there looking for love. And like I said, I made sure I got what I wanted. And I think friendship was an afterthought for me. And also because I'm quite shy and a bit awkward. I think that can come across as like standoffish. I've had that my whole life, but I'm just really awkward. <laughs> Oh my God, so many false headlines. But now I just try and laugh it off with my friends. Like I'll send or my friends will send me and be like, oh, have you read this? My favorite is like, oh my God, Megan and her mystery man. Any man around me, I'm like linked to. I think my most extravagant spend was my house and oh that kept me that kept me up at night like that was a big purchase it's a massive decision and like two houses that I wanted before that had fallen through for some other reason but no I think that's the most like grown up thing I've ever bought and I'm looking to rent some properties as well so hopefully it might feature on Selling Sunset at some point soon. <laughs> Because I'm so bad at doing my own makeup, I feel like, oh, I couldn't have my own beauty range. But at the same time, I know that everyone commented on like the red lips from Love Island and everyone always comments about my brows. I think you could be having the worst day and feel awful. You put a big gold hoop in, some gold jewellery, a red lip and bush your brows up and you're good to go. Like you feel like an absolute queen. So I think, yeah, if I had a product, it would be like a red lip and a brow product. I want to travel the world and I've always said this but it's always been like work commitments and then like Love Island or relationships. There's always some reason why I haven't been able to travel and I think that would be the most beautiful thing regardless of like material possessions and stuff like that to just travel the world with someone that I love and explore. Just thinking of the bigger picture rather than going to like bougie clubs and seeing the same group of people I really want to explore. Be a little Dora the Explorer. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching me spill the tea with Cosmo UK. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>